How's it going everybody? Raising Hell here and today I'm going to be going over the three most common mistakes I see new players making when playing Don't Starve Together The Forge. This list is by no means comprehensive and only focuses on the actions I've personally seen continue to drag the team down during my time spent playing this event. Number one, players fail to focus their fire. <laughs> What does this mean? It means that when you attack an enemy, it should be an enemy that somebody else is also attacking. And preferably, it should be one enemy. Everybody, except maybe one player dealing with crowd control, should be focusing their fire on a single enemy. Uh, there are a couple of good reasons for this. For one thing, if you focus on the enemies that are being attacked by your melee class characters, it will actually break their defenses. You'll see a little shield above that character. When the enemy mob is attacked by a melee weapon-wielding character, you'll notice it breaks their defense. And that means that the ranged teammates can now deal more damage to the enemy mobs with the broken shields. The second reason is simply because if you focus on enemies one at a time, your team will take less damage because you'll be eliminating that those enemies quicker than you would if everybody broke off and skirmished with each enemy one on one. I see this happen so much and it is usually the number one reason why I've seen teams that I've been on dragged down and defeated in the first couple of rounds. So if you want to to be a good teammate. Make sure you focus your fire on the enemies that the melee characters are focusing on. Uh, preferably, everybody should try to focus on one enemy mob at a time, but there are going to be times when that's not practical. So simply putting in your best effort to focus your fire on a mob that other teammates are focusing on as well will do wonders when it comes to actually helping the team progress. Number two, I see a lot of people who continue to aggro enemies that have gone into the healing circle. Now, I'm not going to be overly technical about the name behind a lot of the items within the forge but there is a staff of healing basically that only drops there's only there's only one of those per game and the player who has it is essentially controlling the arena uh, they'll be able to determine where the players will go to heal now one of the biggest problems that I've run into both as somebody who has been in the healing role as well as somebody who has tanked for their healer is that the healing circle will be thrown down but one or two of the players inside it will start attacking enemies that are also inside that circle sleeping. <laughs> It is okay to attack enemies that are outside the circle because those can still harm the players since they're not inside the healing circle. But once enemies enter the healing circle, they'll normally fall asleep if you do not bother them. This allows the healing staff to perform the dual tasks of healing your team in addition to providing crowd control. So when you see your team's healer throw down the healing circle, do your utmost to avoid aggroing any enemies that entered the radius of that circle, especially during later rounds when dealing with bosses as this extra time is critical for allowing your team to heal before continuing the fight. The third mistake I see players make in the forge is revival prioritization. And this is a multifaceted issue. The first aspect to this is when players don't allow Wilson to revive fallen teammates. <laughs> Wilson should always be number one when it comes to reviving fallen teammates because his perks allow him to revive fallen teammates twice as quickly and revive them with significantly more health than any other character. In addition to this, while Wilson is good at reviving players, he's not necessarily the best choice when it comes to wielding the healing staff. But the person wielding the healing staff is very important to the team's composition. And if they fall, they should be the character that you prioritize reviving first in pretty much any given situation because once the healer is revived they can start doing crowd control using their healing staff and they can start healing teammates using the healing staff now i will admit that if you're good enough at the game there is no reason for your teammates to ever die and therefore you would never need to revive them but for the vast majority of beginning and intermediate players it's pretty much a given that your teammates are going to fall and when they do just make sure always revive the healer first unless it's impractical to do so and otherwise let wilson do the reviving so i hope these three tips help you become a better teammate if you're looking for a place to better coordinate with other players please consider joining my discord server i'll try to be announcing at least one match per day and even if this isn't the only place you go to find players to help you play the forge it's good to have another option when it comes to scheduling as it can be a little bit difficult to arrange for different players in different time zones to find a common time to actually play this event an invitation link will be in the description below this video otherwise thank you very much for watching as always and i hope to see you next time